Welcome, friend, to Life and Liberty Radio. I'm David Householder, here to encourage your pursuit of happiness. You and our partners exploring our shared spiritual journeys. Together, we're dreaming and working for a free society. Tell others today about our adventure in faith and freedom. So breathe in, open your mind, lift up your spirit. Let's get started. So what's really so bad about bullying? Now, I grew up in a time where everybody sort of knew who the bullies were, and it was sort of a generic uh, concept of a, a person who was hard on kids at the playground or in the neighborhood, you know, you know, that kind of thing. But the truth is, parents weren't really involved in that. We kind of sorted it out and figured it out, and all of us were on the receiving end of some not-so-pleasant social encounters in school, in our neighborhoods, growing up. It's part of growing up. Now, there is such a thing as actual malicious bullying, but most of us have never experienced it. The, the truth is, bullying itself, the, the malicious kind, does need to be stopped. And, the, and that's the kind where a young person will pick out, let's say his name is Ralph, and Ralph will pick out a mark. And let's say Ralph's mark is a guy named Steve. And so Ralph will kind of find somebody at the beginning of the school year, let's say Steve, and he focuses on Steve, and he systematically destroys Steve's life during the year. And it's malicious, and it's in an attempt to raise one's own status by continuing to squash this one kid. Now, now that needs to be stopped. That's malicious, and parents should stop it, teachers should stop it, other kids should stop it. That's, that's not what I'm talking about here. But the truth is that that's just a real small percentage of what we've come to call bullying. Now, pretty much any negative social experience on the playground is, is called bullying. And I think we need those rough experiences socially. I think it's good for us to have to kind of uh, do a little rough and tumble socially on the playground in the lunchroom and, and get called some names to toughen up a little bit. I, I really do. I wouldn't want my kid to go to a school where that wasn't a part of things. That's how we build character, by running up against uh, problems and challenges and resistance. Because the truth is, we need discomfort. Now, that sounds absolutely crazy here in the, in the 21st century. What do you mean discomfort? Shouldn't we be looking for a stress-free water slide glide through life? Well, yeah, if you want to get flabby, mentally flabby, physically flabby, emotionally flabby, sure. But the truth is, we grow most through resistance, and we need a little bit of it. You look at kittens or puppies, and they, they wrestle all over the floor. Why do they do that? Because it's good for them, and they need it. Truth is, we also need hunger. And in today's fast food world, where our, our pantries are stocked with all kinds of food, we hardly even experience even a little twang of it. I remember growing up where you don't eat between meals, and you got good and hungry between the meals, and I think that was good for us. We were all a lot leaner and tougher and able to go a little bit longer without food. I don't think it's such a bad thing at all. In fact, the ancients talked about fasting as a good thing. Muslims fast during Ramadan, and it, it toughens them up a little bit. It's not a bad thing. We should be fasting and feasting. And if we never fast, then we, we never have any room for feasting. And if we're feasting all the time, we just get fat and flabby. So, so hunger is a good thing. People say, well, you need to eat eight little meals all day so you never get hungry. Well, that's crazy because when you get hungry... That's when your body says, hey, there's no blood sugar here. I'm going to burn fat. Now, last I checked, that was a good thing. For the trend lines behind the headlines, listen daily to The Bottom Line on KBRT in Los Angeles, KCBC in San Francisco, KBRT740.com. Worldwide live streaming, California's voice for life and liberty. So, so we need hunger. And physically speaking, doing hard things is what builds our muscles. We go to the gym and we lift heavy things made of iron. And what does that do? It builds muscles. If you put your arm and leg in a cast, it comes out atrophied. 
some of us are emotionally atrophied, socially atrophied, physically atrophied. We haven't run up against enough tough stuff. I am so glad that I grew up in the Mountain West where things were a little bit tougher. There were some tough characters in our little mining town, and there were some tough characters in Great Falls, Montana, where I lived in junior high. And I got called some things, and I had to kind of, uh, in a scrappy sort of way, learn to, to handle that. And I think a lot of our kids get, in, get raised in an environment that's just too soft. And they look soft. Oh, my goodness. Some of the kids look so soft nowadays. There's no hardness to their bodies. There's no hardness to their, to their emotions. There's no, they can't handle difficult situations at work. Oh, the coworker doesn't like me. The company needs to change all of its policies to make sure this never happens. But that's the truth is that's part of life. It really is. Mental toughness. Who, who are your favorite teachers? Chances are they weren't the easy ones, were they? You just named at least two in your mind that were just brutal with you. I, I still remember my English teacher in high school who ripped my, ripped my papers apart, did red ink all over the place. I owe a lot to that man. I really do. And chances are you owe a lot to a tough teacher, a demanding teacher, a demanding coach, a, a demanding band director, somebody who didn't treat you softly. And social toughness. I, I, I think sometimes we, we're, just, we're just bending over backwards to cocoon people in cotton balls and bubble wrap them to make sure that they don't run into any social awkwardness whatsoever and that everybody wins all the time and everybody gets a, a ribbon. You know, the truth is, I've learned a lot through losing. I've learned a lot through getting bad grades. I've learned a lot by getting rejected by people. And if that never happens to anyone... We get soft. And it's a tough world out there. And we need a little bit of toughness. I'm not talking we should all be like Marines or Navy SEALs or something, but a little bit of toughness is a good thing. And it's in flu season. Everyone is so bent out of shape over flu season. You got hand sanitizer all over the place. And people walk up to me and they cover their mouths. Oh, don't come too close to me. I might have a cold. I'm, Please. I've been to Africa. I'll be fine. And you go to the parts of the world where people are less worried about germs. A little cleanliness is a good thing. I mean, washing your hands and, you know, good hygiene, I'm all for it. But the truth is we were not designed for a stress-free life. We were not designed to have it go easy. We were designed to grow in strength, to grow in character, not to seek out problems, but to not be afraid of them, to get out there and face our issues, face those difficult people, face those physical challenges that we might have to face, and to you know, carry something heavy once in a while and work through things. A lot of us are just all these aches and pains because we're, we're, never, we're never greasing up our, our joints. We're never warming them up. We're never, we're never moving with any, with any um, force in our lives. And the truth is, the more of that we do, the happier we're going to be. So we started with bullying. And once again, please hear me. There's such a thing as systematic bullying, which needs to stop. But most of what goes on in the playground, let the kids settle their own issues. Those of you who grew up with lots of siblings, there was lots of scuffling and arguments and all that stuff. You ever notice that kids that come out of big families are better socially adjusted than only children? Now, if you're an only child, I'm not coming down on you. I'm not. But we really do need to be in unsupervised time with no parents around so we can scrape our knees a little bit, so we can fall out of a tree, so we can break a bone. I mean, it's part of growing up. So let's not overly protect our kids. Let's not overly protect our society. And let's not create a society where everything that's a little rough gets punished. Well, that's all for today on Life and Liberty Radio. Thanks so much for sharing this part of your spiritual journey with me. Now, the views on this program are not necessarily those of my advertisers, sponsors, places I work or do business with. They're purely my own, but I'm sharing them with you, so share your ideas with me. Write me on Twitter at Liberty House, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y-H-O-U-S, no E. Until next time, let's continue dreaming and working for a free and spiritually grounded society.